Small NATO members who dream about attacking Russia should know Article 5 is not effective against tactical nuclear weapons, the deputy head of the Russian Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, has said. The former Russian president and prime minister was commenting on recent statements by Estonia's top general about preemptive strikes on Russia in the service of NATO objectives. The sillier the state, the greater the arrogance of its individual insane leaders. Medvedev told people should take into account only one thing. Should Russia use, say, tactical nuclear weapons against a state that allows itself such statements, nothing but a stain will remain. Sure, Article 5 of the Washington Treaty may apply, but the state will no longer exist, Medvedev added, referring to NATO's famous mutual defense provision. Medvedev spoke at the Kapustin Yar missile range in Astrakhan region, the site where the Russian Air Force tests cutting-edge rocket technology. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled changes to Moscow's nuclear doctrine at a meeting of the nation's Security Council with Medvedev in attendance. Widely regarded as a message to the US and its allies, as well as Ukraine, the updated doctrine would allow Russia to deploy its nuclear deterrent in case of a conventional attack by a state that is backed by a nuclear power. The head of the Estonian general staff, Major General Vahua Karus, said last week that new NATO contingency plans for a conflict with Moscow envisioned the Baltic state launching a strike across the border. Our long-range strike capabilities are fully taken into account in NATO plans, and NATO tells us that we have to take care of certain targets in Russia, and that's when they can come to Estonia and take the next steps. Karus told the Estonian state broadcaster ERR. Karus described the new mission as a fundamental change to Estonia's military doctrine, noting that prior to the Ukraine conflict, the US-led bloc expected the Baltic state to hold out for about 10 days before it could get NATO reinforcements. Estonia joined the organization in 2004 and has been one of the most vocal supporters of Ukraine in the conflict with Russia. The Russian Federation Security Service is fighting in the Kursk region and is unsuccessfully trying to coordinate combat missions with the military. As reported by the Institute for the Study of War, the Russian opposition newspaper Novaya Gazeta Evropi identified a serviceman of the FSB Special Forces who died in battles in the Kursk region in August 2024. An FSB officer told the publication that the agency's leadership had tasked Special Forces including elements of the Alpha and Vimpel groups with identifying and destroying the Ukrainian armed forces, sabotage and reconnaissance groups. According to the source, these groups are poorly suited to conducting combined battles with the use of heavy equipment against regular armed forces. Usually, special service fighters conducted counter-terrorist operations against small terrorist groups and therefore do not have sufficient training and equipment necessary to respond to the Ukrainian armed forces. Another source close to the Russian Special Services added that the FSB Special Operations Center does not have common communications with military units and there is still no common headquarters to coordinate combat missions between them. Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the FSB to conduct a counter-terrorist operation in the Belgorod, Bryansk and Kursk regions on August the 9th, following the start of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation on August the 6th. However, he then began assigning duplicate tasks to the Ministry of Defense, the FSB and the Russian National Guard. The Kremlin and the military have tried to create a coherent and effective command and control structure, but it remains unclear who has what responsibilities. Analysts believe that duplication of tasks and weak structures will create friction between the FSB and the Russian Defense Ministry. President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region has already shown certain results. In particular, it slowed down the Russians and forced them to redeploy about 40,000 soldiers. According to experts in the Kursk region of Russia, the Ukrainian armed forces appear to have entered the rear of the Glushkov group of Russians. Russian ruler Putin does not need the Kursk region at all, says retired colonel of the Ukrainian armed forces, pilot instructor and military expert Roman Svitan. The Kremlin will not even notice if they completely lose this region.
Defense Express has reported that Russia has begun installing SpaceX's Starlink satellite communications on Shahed-136 attack drones. Starlink equipment was spotted on one of the drones that Ukraine's defense forces downed during a Russian attack on the night of the 24th to the 25th of September. Defense Express published photos showing a satellite dish with a serial number which investigators will use to trace the supply channels of the Starlink terminal. By equipping the Shaheds with satellite communications, Russia can obtain powerful feedback from these drones along with the ability to transmit data from it and the capability to change flight tasks at any distance. Defense Express emphasized that this development primarily transforms a Shahed drone into a reconnaissance tool. With Starlink, Russians can use a Shahed drone as an extremely long-range loitering munition capable of additional reconnaissance with an extra camera and which can even strike moving targets. Shaheds were likely chosen for this purpose due to their range around 2,000 kilometers and significant internal space in the fuselage. Defense Express also noted that while Starlink does not operate and is not sold in Russia, the Russians are acquiring it through third-party countries. Although the Starlink terminals are useful for fast and reliable access to the internet, they also allow battlefield users to control drones and other military technology. Earlier, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk and the Kremlin denied reports that Russian troops in occupied territories of Ukraine were using Starlink. The Defense Intelligence Agency of Ukraine's Ministry of Defense said that intercepted radio transmissions of Russian troops indicated they were using Starlink terminals for internet access. But Musk said on X that the reports were categorically false, and to the best of our knowledge, no Starlinks have been sold directly or indirectly to Russia. The US sent thousands of Starlink terminals to Ukraine at the beginning of the war with Russia in February 2022 after seeking ways to keep the Ukrainian government connected in anticipation of the invasion. Before Russia invaded, the US was prompted to send the terminals amid fears of Russian physical and cyber attacks on Ukraine's electrical and communications infrastructure.